Nearly a decade ago, my husband and I were in a much, much different place. We were newlyweds, fresh out of college and struggling to afford life. We were hopeful, but also realistic. We knew we needed to find a small one-bedroom apartment that would meet our needs, but not cost a small fortune. He was working at a car repair shop, and I was a barista, looking for a job as a vet tech, having just graduated from the vet tech program at the local college. My husband was soon going up for promotion, now that he had finished his business management program with honors. The owner of the repair shop was looking to retire, and he wanted my husband to take over. Until then, we were basically living paycheck to paycheck. We found the teeniest studio apartment. It was really not even big enough for both of us, but we were determined to make it work. We both had student loan payments to start paying on, so we didn't want to live beyond our means. The apartment was above a bar, so we got an excellent deal, because no one else wanted to live there. We were night owls, so it was the perfect fit. While we were moving in, I said to my husband that the air was thick or heavy. The energy was just a little off, not enough to cause concern. It was just different. Of course, my husband thought I was crazy and laughed it off. The second day we were in the place, I was unpacking the living room, which was also the bedroom, because again, this place was small. We bought a small dresser that we could also use as a top for a table. I was putting my clothes away when I heard something behind me coming from the kitchen. At first I couldn't place it, probably because it wasn't supposed to be happening. But then I recognized it. The water was running. I stepped into the kitchen, and sure enough, the faucet was running full blast. I was amazed at the fact it turned on by itself. I obviously knew enough about plumbing to know that was pretty impossible. Shutting it off, I sent a text to my husband, who said back, Maybe you left it on when you washed those glasses before I left. I rolled my eyes and put my phone down. He wasn't here. He didn't hear the water start suddenly. I was about to resume unpacking, when I heard it again. Water running. But this time, it was coming from the direction of the bathroom. There's no way, I thought, on the way to check. My jaw dropped open when I walked into the bathroom. The sink was running and the shower was too. This time, after shutting them off, I didn't even bother texting my husband. I stood in the bathroom a few minutes in shock. I know it doesn't sound very dramatic, water running, but when you know you're home alone and it happens twice, it's unnerving. Walking back to the main living space, I cussed out loud when I realized I heard water running again. No frickin' way. Enough already, I yelled, stomping to the kitchen. Sure enough, the kitchen sink was running wide open again. And this time, the stopper was in, so had we not been home, it could have flooded. Frustrated and nervous, I turned the water off and took the plug out of the drain. I needed a minute, so I sat down on the futon and tried scrolling through social media for a bit. But the energy in the room suddenly felt overwhelming. Needing to get out, I texted my husband to make sure he was due to be home in the next little while and took off on a walk. I didn't even bother warning him the water may be running when he got home. He would probably ask if I was feeling okay and tell me to rest. I had a tendency to overdo things. I pushed myself to my limits physically and emotionally. I always have. So sometimes I got too exhausted and had to be told to sit down and relax. But I knew this wasn't one of those times. What I just experienced couldn't be from fatigue. I didn't leave the water running in the kitchen and the bathroom. Later that night, I was wide awake, still unnerved from earlier. And I was upset because when I told my husband, he just laughed it off. As I was finally about to fall asleep, I heard water running. I sighed and jabbed my husband in the side, saying, It's happening again, hear that? We both got up. The kitchen faucet, bathroom sink, and shower head were all running at once. 
irritated, my husband headed for the bathroom and I headed for the kitchen. There's no way it's a plumbing issue, I said. He nodded, finally on the same page as me. The rest of the night, the faucets literally turned on every 30 minutes. By 3 a.m., neither of us had had a wink of sleep. The next time the faucets went off, I yelled, exhausted and frustrated. Okay, we get it. You're obviously a ghost and you apparently enjoy annoying people, I yelled. I would regret that later because it seemed to make whoever we were dealing with angry. At first, after I yelled and we shut the water off in both rooms, I thought I'd gotten through because it was suddenly quiet and an hour had passed without any issues. But just as we were finally relaxing, the lights started flickering on and off and all the faucets turned on. We were at our wits end. I don't care if the place floods, pack a bag, we're going to my parents' place, my husband said. And there we were, on their doorstep at 5 a.m. We both had the day off, so we were able to get some sleep. But we both knew we had to return to the apartment to make sure there was no flooding. When we stopped in, everything was fine. We grabbed a few more things because neither of us was going to stay there again. Luckily, I was blessed with the coolest mother-in-law ever, and she was into watching paranormal documentaries, so she knew exactly what to do. She somehow found someone who did cleansings, and within a day, we were back in the apartment. We were apprehensive at first, but nothing paranormal ever happened again after that cleansing. I felt annoyed right with you. I would have probably been in the corner crying if that happened to me. Talk about sensory overload. Thankfully, your mother-in-law knew what to do. I bet now that it's been almost ten years, you can probably look back and laugh. Thank you for sharing your story. If you have a paranormal story to share, email it to the address in the description below. Please like the video, it really does help the channel. Subscribe if you haven't, we're growing a pretty fun community over here. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow, friends.